Hey everyone, Johnny here. I wanted to take a few minutes to go over the new Asset Browser feature in Blender 2.93 Alpha. This is going to be added in a future version of Blender, but for right now you can get to it through the developer add-ons in the settings menu. Now to show how to get it set up and working, I created a couple of assets here. A shelf, which is its own object, and then a larger shelf which is actually made up of several smaller pieces in its own collection. To make sure you have the Asset Browser available, go to your Edit menu and go to Preferences. Then from there, under Interface, make sure the Developer Extras option is checked. This will give you the Experimental tab. Under Experimental, make sure Asset Browser is selected. Now I would recommend creating a new workspace for the Asset Browser. You can do this by duplicating your layout, which is your first one here, by right-clicking on it, go to Duplicate. I'm going to double-click on the title and rename this tab Asset Browser. Now under that one, I'm going to go ahead and move up this timeline and change this area into an Asset Browser space. The first thing to notice with the Asset Browser is this drop-down right here. By default, it'll be set to Current File. This means it's going to show you any assets that are in the current file as opposed to ones that are other places. When you first start up using the Asset Browser, you'll notice you'll only have the default option. I have several others here set up on my machine, but we'll go into how to set that up in a moment. So in the current file, in order to create an asset, we would first need to select an object. So if I select this short bookshelf, go over to the outliner and right click on it. If I move down to the ID data option, I have one named Mark Asset. What this is going to do is mark that object as an asset and now it shows up in the current file. It will also try to create a preview of that asset. And in this case, we're getting a straight on view of the top of it. So it's of marginal use. Now for objects that are actually built of several uh, separate objects and in a collection, we can mark an entire collection as an asset. Here I have bookshelf two in this collection. So instead of right clicking on an object, I'm just going to right click on the entire collection, go down to ID data and then mark asset. Now this one you'll notice doesn't give us an appropriate preview and so we would need to create one ourselves. I've found the easiest way to do that is to go into rendered mode and take a screenshot. I'm going to isolate this object, put it in rendered mode, and then I'm just going to take a Windows full screen snip and then save it. Now in my Asset Browser, if I select that collection and I hit the N key to bring up the side panel, you'll see this folder icon. If I choose this, I can go browse for that preview I just took and use it as its preview image. And so now that object is there. You might find that as you add assets, even of simple objects, you're going to want to add a custom preview. And bring it in. So now I have nice previews for both of these objects. You'll notice too that there are several categories of items that you can make assets of. In most cases, if you right click on an object or a material or other item in the outliner and go to ID data, you can mark it as an asset. So in this case, if I go to my bookshelf and drill down to its material, I can right click on that and say mark asset. And now under my shading option, you'll see that that material is now available as, as an asset. So if I were to go in and create another material for this bookshelf, we would create a red material. I can also then 
click here, or I can click here in this option area and choose Mark Asset. And now you'll see I have two. What's nice with the Asset Browser for shading is that you can drag and drop materials from the Asset Browser onto your object. So if I want to change this, I would just need to drop this material onto the object. Now this is all well and good for objects within the same file, but what about ones in other files? What we're going to do is save this file out to a folder. I've created a folder on my desktop called Assets Test. And I'm just going to save it in as this untitled.blend here in the root of this folder. Now, if I go to a new file, and I go to my Edit menu and go to Preferences, you'll find under the File Paths an area for Asset Libraries. By default, you'll just have this first entry that points to your Documents folder and a folder called Blender slash Assets. Now, if this folder doesn't exist, you'll want to create it. Then that way, any files you put in that folder, you can browse to using the Asset Browser. However, what I've done is created subfolders under mine for different categories of assets. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add another asset library and point it to my assets test folder on my desktop. And I'm just going to call it test. Now if I go to my asset browser tab and change current file to test, I'll see my options that I have there. At this point, I can very easily drag these items from the Asset Browser into the scene. Here's two things to watch for. When you create an object by itself, like our short bookshelf, and we drag it into the scene, it's going to be centered around the object's origin. So in this case, the origin was at the center of the bookshelf, not at the bottom. In the same regard, if I bring in a collection, it's actually going to be the world origin is going to be the center of the collection. And so since this object was created off of the world origin, off to the side, it does that. So in this case, I'd probably want to go back and edit these two so that the objects were uh, placed around the world origin correctly. One thing that I've seen to be helpful is that if we can manage the directories that we have our items in, we can actually uh, more easily categorize things. So if I go back to my file paths, you'll notice that I've created several things like electronics, furniture, archviz, decorations, kitchenware, and a parts library, all under my Blender Assets folder. And so in there, I've gone ahead and created blend files, one for each asset. So now, if I go to default, this just shows me the items just in that top level of asset folder. So in that case, it's the home directory, slash documents, slash blender, slash assets. But if I go to electronics, it's that same folder, but then the electronics subfolder underneath that. Now, an interesting thing is if I go back to my top level folder, the default, and I go over here to this display mode, I can choose a different recursion. Here, the recursion is set to blend file. That means it's just gonna look in the blend files in that folder. However, if I change that to one level, or two levels, or three levels, it's going to look in subfolders and the blend files in those subfolders. So if I choose one level, now every subfolder under my default will show me the assets that I have. Or, with the way that I've got my folders set up, I can drill down into just one of those if I care to. So if I want to just jump into the furniture subfolder, I can do that very easily and drag in whatever options I like.
Now what I've found is it's very easy to piece together a scene using the asset library because of this. Because all of my assets are right front and center whenever I need them. Well, I hope you found this quick overview of the Asset Browser helpful. I'm finding that it's changing the way that I'm working with items that I've already created and making it much easier for me to reuse them in the future projects. If you're finding my videos helpful, go ahead and click like or subscribe below. If you want to follow me on Twitch or Twitter, my username is slash Johnny Gizmo on both platforms. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.